All right, UH Nation, my name is Reed Nelson. This is Izzy Alcafas. This is This Week in Rec. Um, week four, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. The season's going fast. Week four. Uh, big upset tonight. I didn't get an opportunity to watch it. Neither did you, but that's not going to stop us from talking about it. Yeah. Team America, who laid an egg last week after a good week one uh, win, beat the Bulls tonight. Um, again, we didn't see any of it. I was on the other court. You weren't here. Um, but we talked a little bit about the topsy turviness of this league, and this what I mean. The Avengers just got crushed by the Bulls, mm-hmm. and now Team America beats the Bulls. I mean, what are your thoughts initially on hearing that? Right. I mean, we t- discussed this last week. I mean, the Avengers also beat the Pigeons by 43. They lost by 30 to the Bulls. So does that mean, you know, Team America? I mean, it sh- it just goes to show how much energy and effort plays into these games. Um, there's there's not enough. The teams, there's significant gap in talent on some of these teams if the effort is there. With Team America, they can play. It's not like they're, you know, one of the bottom three, four, five teams in Fridley, right? They can play. So if you don't match their effort, they can win these games. Um, and the Bulls coming off the high of last week thinking they're, you know, a lot better than they are, probably eased off a little bit, and Team America took advantage. And that'll happen after big wins. Um, we've seen it before. So, and Team America was the number one ranked team in the country based on Allen and Simmer's <laughs> awful rankings of teams. Hey, well, maybe they are the maybe number one right. team in the country. Maybe those rankings aren't so awful. So, um, okay, last night, uh, number one seed. Now, four teams are in the top eight from Bloomington, four teams from Fridley. I didn't look super closely, but I think I saw my sock thumpers in the top eight uh, after losing last week. So we could talk about that a little bit later. But uh, the number one seed falls to the Gorillas. Now, Ryan Samuelson's gone. Garland Sanchez is gone. How is this game different with those players? Uh, and Bryant was hurt. Um, he, he had a hamstring injury, so he's kind of, kind of half-speeding. And he didn't play in the second half. Um, so I, it was a game that it was similar to the Rebels-Gorillas game of last season. The Rebels only had five, I believe. Um, and the Gorillas won that game pretty easily. They won it by maybe 25, and then they played in the championship. Um, hopefully we get to play them again uh, because, you know, Kevin Chase promised that they would go undefeated. They wouldn't lose a game. Uh, so it was kind of nice to get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. That was a big win. Um, but <clears throat> I don't think Ryan changes the game as much as Garland does, and here's why. Um, we could have used another smaller body out there. We were We were having to – guard guys bigger than us um you know e was their small uh, e and Gar- uh, greg were playing the two two and three um and that made it really tough for us so if ryan if you insert ryan now we can kind of size up with their team it's a little easier for us um they did well on the board i mean we did actually did a pretty good job i think the offensive rebounds were a little off because they did a pretty good job on the glass um but Garland would have made a big difference, I think, because it would have just added another big body that we needed to deal with. And his post game is so refined, be- a better post game than a lot of people have in this league, and that kind of that kind of hurts. Garland's never a guy who gets much MVP talk, and I don't know why. I mean, he, he's in and out of the league, and when he plays on the Celtics, he kind of's got that Brian Marmel syndrome where you kind of lose him with all the other great players. You think he's a legit MVP candidate? No, because he doesn't try hard enough. Uh, he brings it in moments, but he doesn't. He rarely brings it for a full 44 minutes, so his numbers tend to suffer. He could do, Don Garland could dominate. There's no doubt about it. If he was in shape, I don't think he's in shape. He doesn't look in shape to me. If he was in shape and he wanted it, um, yeah, he could dominate. I think he pl- tries. I've watched him play in open versus playing in rec, and there is a effort difference a huge effort difference between garland and open and garland and rack sure uh is the mvp caliber absolutely uh but mvp effort absolutely not so about 17 minutes into our episode last week you said something about junius that sparked uh 29 comments on the this week in rec bulletin 40 plus comments on the um on the podcast i mean a whole podcast dedicated to it I mean, you called him classless, and it blew up. Yeah. Okay, I I'm looking forward to putting you know a nail in the coffin, putting pu- putting this discussion to bed. Is there anything else you want to add after everything K 
came down as it did this last week? No, the only thing is I think people are misunderstanding the whole idea behind it. I, all these comments on the website talking about easing up on teams, not trying, that, that wasn't the point. There is nothing wrong with trying. There's nothing wrong with giving effort. But there is something wrong with the idea of pressing a team. And then the teams are saying, well, the Bulls beat the Avengers by 30, and they kept pressing. The Bulls Avengers are two good teams, right? The Avengers can handle themselves. They won a championship, right? The Squids will never win a champion. They'll never win a championship. And they win games based off forfeit. And those are the wins for the season and free agents. So there's a huge difference between who you're playing against and how you're playing against them. So purely this, my comments are purely based off of the fact full court press, double teaming against the worst team in the league. That was, that's it. And everybody's talking about other games against good teams. I mean, I don't think people are really understanding or reading the comments. All that. They're just going, kind of skimming through and then writing their own comment. Well, and somebody used the term enemy today, and that kind of took me back a little bit. I was like, okay, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have respect for everyone. I mean, there's rivalries, but enemies? I don't know. I don't know about enemies. No, and it's a wreck basketball <laughs> league. And like, this is lifetime fitness. You pay eighty bucks a month, right? You're not going to pay eighty bucks a month here. Have a league that in the gym that you attend, and then go play in another league. Some people do it. Some people play multiple, but there's no nowhere for else nowhere else for these guys to go. This is the lowest that they can go. And I know you've you've brought up the idea of maybe installing a league below rec and seeing how many teams would jump in that league now if we created a league like that and then these teams still decided on playing rec do whatever you want they have the option now to go a rung below and they have foregone that option to play in a higher league so that is purely my my beef with with the whole thing they i just else to go. i have no problem i mean every whatever i just wish yeah. one somebody would admit that it was a stats play and that they yeah. wanted better stats. I, that, that's I it. I agree. And, and my comment was kind of, you know, my guarantee was once a team is playing the free agents or a team that only has one win, I don't know if you saw that comment, to, if they're up 50 points, stop taking stats for that team. We'll see how, <laughs> we'll see how hard they really play, right? Because yeah. it's, it's not about effort. It's not about, oh, how, how, how we were taught to play the game. Half these guys never played organized basketball. You can tell by the way they played. Nobody taught them anything. Um, so... Yeah, and I completely agree. It's a stats play. It's a ego play. It's a small community. Everybody wants to show everybody up. And, and, and for me, you know, I, I feel bad. I mean, I feel bad for a lot of people that aren't as fortunate as some of these other guys, and they just want to fit in, and you just let them fit in. We're all supposed to be a rec community. There's nothing else like it in Ultimate Hoops, I don't think. Um, so, and h- how old is Noe? Like 12, probably? Oh, this guy? 12, yeah, he's like 12. He does this every time. He's just prepping his brand on his shirt, that's all. So, All right, halfway through the season, week four. Um, right now, I don't know what we know. I mean, we, we were talking about who's going to be the number one team. Yeah. Players committee, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I guess we'll find out. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. Stick, stick around, look at the players committee, top eight, and we'll see where everyone lands. So see you next week.